If you want Colts talk all year long, you're in the right place. Fires it upfield, caught over the middle, Michael Pittman Jr., there he goes! He's at the 40, he's at the 30, slips out of a tackle, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Michael Pittman Jr. takes it 75 yards to the house! Big run, angling left, 40, he's at the 30, down the near sideline, 20, 50, 10, 5, touchdown! Jonathan Taylor, a 49-yard gallop to Peter. In the Indiana Union Construction Industry Radio Studio, let's get the podcast started. Welcome to the official Colts podcast. Uh, I was in another day of the week there, but now I'm back here. And Welcome. I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm Jeffrey Gorman, J.J. Stankovitz, voice of Lucas Oil Stadium, also a great writer and uh, media member of Colts.com. Find out all his stuff online. Follow him on Twitter, X, at J.J. Stankovitz, voice of the Colts. Matt Taylor is with us here. Find him at Mate Colts on Twitter, X. Lara Overton is on assignment. Guys, we're going on the football field, but one foot is off the football field Always. with this first topic, all right? I'm going to give you a trio, okay? And this trio is as follows. Anthony Richardson, Tyrese Halliburton, Caitlin Clark. My question to you is, as far as three-headed monster goes in professional sports, is Indianapolis at the peak? So, Mete did. Uh, I can see Mete's computer. There's a bunch of red here. A lot, a lot of research. So okay. That's great. I wanted to not, I, not really, but well, it's, it's so it's more than what I did, which was I had this conversation with uh, Lawrence Holmes, who's a radio host in Chicago, and I did his podcast a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about what this trio would look like, and I was like, put these three up against whoever Chicago's got, mm-hmm. yeah. which right now, b- before this, you know, before Caleb Williams winds up going there in the draft, it was like Connor Bedard. He was a star for the Blackhawks. Sure. And then he was like. See, I didn't do hockey. I, I left <laughs> hockey all the way out. So but, I, okay. I can't do hockey. So honestly, though, you got Connor Bedard and like, I don't know, like, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so, some hockey fans are going to get really mad. At yeah, the sure. Sorry, right, whatever. But I was like, okay, who else does Chicago have? Okay, you're going to have Caleb Williams. Yeah. All right. And then then who else? He was like, Cody Bellinger. No, Cody Bellinger is not it. Yeah. You can't take anyone on the White Sox. They've been shut out six times in 16 games. Oh, nice. They're truly awful. <laughs> Uh, the Bulls don't have anyone. The Bulls are terrible. The Bulls are so bad that since moving to Indiana, I've become a Pacers fan. Really? I just swore <laughs> them off. Why would I spend that's my 30, time that's watching 30 them? That's 30-plus years of fandom. It is. Why would I spend my time watching them? <laughs> They're terrible. Well, I can get into Pacers it. Pacers are great, though. I really could. Uh, I'm just going to say. Anyways, Mete did some research. Los Angeles. How about there? Let's They're go old, with, though. What's that? LeBron, Otani. See, I wrote, yeah, for L.A., I wrote down Justin Herbert. Uh-huh. Not bad. Good player. So we have to define what old is. Like at like the twenty five year well, age. Yeah, Herbert, Herbert would count in this this group here. So, I know, but like hold on, like LeBron's up here, and Tyrese, who's a great player, is here. So well, he's we talking got, about young guns. We're talking about young. Like it, the, this is the potential of the town. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. So Austin like the, the Reeves. Fe- the future then, is for, bright. Mm-hmm. Theme here. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right, we're on it. We're at the top of the Christmas tree. I'm saying we got the <laughs> brightest bulb, guys. I mean, with that yeah. three headed monster. Honestly, the only thing that I think somewhat rivals it, and I still think it falls short, is Cincinnati. Here we go. With Joe Burrow. Now, that has nothing to do Here with Here we it. go. The Reds you fandom has nothing <laughs> to do with Ellie De La Cruz. Okay. Yeah. You've got yeah. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Ellie De La Cruz, You're right you know, there. Matt McClain. Well, you know. Matt McClain's shoulder. Good pull. Like, very I, 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 yeah, very much this year out yeah. of the question. Good pull. Yeah. See, I, I couldn't even do that in my head, and I'm glad you did that. Good pull. I think that's right up there with Indiana. But, yeah, I mean, New York has Daniel Jones, if you – want to classify him okay. you got julius randall but he's 30 aaron judge and he's is 31 yeah. juan soto's 25 yeah. so yeah i think indianapolis kind of wins the mantle yeah. there okay we do win the mantle so by the way welcome caitlin clark and i can't wait to bring you know how see cool was that yeah pretty that cool amazing. i mean the two-time did you what, see back-to-back tri- player did, of the year did you and see the uh the atmospheric gamebridge for the draft party huge yeah uh one of our graphic designers grant he uh he's got season tickets mm-hmm. and he went there and it looked incredible really when they announced you know with the fever select caitlin clark whole place goes nuts and <laughs> it looked it looked like there was a good crowd there like excellent i i'm very excited for uh to, to go to some fever games <laughs> Get, hey. on, get on that bandwagon. All three of those players, are uh, the arrow is up, and that includes Anthony Richardson and obviously Tyrese Halliburton getting ready for the playoffs. Congratulations and good luck to the Pacers. Okay, let's talk about in our own backyard right now. Big week, guys. Big week. Players are back in the building. Uh, everybody's around there talking to players and such today. Uh, one of the top things is, uh, J.J., we're going to hear from DeForest Buckner and you. Mm-hmm. You caught up with him earlier today, but that's a big buzz around here. I mean, putting two years on that contract, being one of the best-paid – 
uh, linemen, defensive linemen. What does that mean for this whole thing as far as the defensive prowess, Gus Bradley's defense? I, I mean, I think you can look at this defense, and DeForest Buckner's kind of been the engine that runs it. Him and Grover Stewart in the middle of it, mm -hmm. they, they've been a driving force of whatever level of defensive success the Colts have had since Buck got here in right. 2020. It's, it's been those two guys in the middle uh, you know, wrecking stuff against the run, wrecking stuff against the pass. But the thing with Buckner, and, and this goes for, I think you look at, you know, Grover Stewart, Kenny Moore, these, these other guys who the Colts have rewarded. These are guys who are pillars within this team. They're guys who, whether they lead by example or lead through their words, the, these are guys who you want to have around. You are, you, you are sprinting to the negotiating table to get something done to keep DeForest Buckner here. And that is, that's not a quality you get in every single player. There are some great players who teams are like, eh, you know, maybe, maybe we can no. find a, maybe we can <clears throat> replace this guy. The Colts have shown there's replacing DeForest Buckner. It's something we haven't really even thought about because he doesn't miss any games. Right. But this is a guy who, Mete, I, I think he's one of the most indi indispensable, if not the most indispensable guy in this defense. Well, he's missed one game since 2020, and it wasn't because of injury. Yeah. He was a close contact due to COVID. Wow. Right? So you're talking about the durability, the consistency, and you're right. If you're talking about most indispensable Colts, at least since 2020, it's probably a tie between DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. And you don't have to be a football savant. I mean, if you watch the Colts last year, when those two guys, I mean, they can't play every snap, right? They need a break. I mean, Buckner's still playing 70% of the snaps, right. if not more, um, on average throughout the course of the season. So when those guys aren't on the field, it is a it was a noticeable difference. Mm -hmm. And this is all due respect to – Eric Johnson and Taven Bryan, but they, I mean, again, Grover Stewart, different and, player, yeah. They they don't grow on trees, right. so that's why when you have a chance to re-sign or extend in this case to Forrest Buckner, who's a willing participant in wanting to come back and showing that loyalty, like you talked about today, uh, yeah, it, it's it's a win 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 for everybody involved, the fans included. Um, so that's why I think the signing, and this is kind of off tangent a little bit, but. That's why the signing of Raekwon Davis is so big, so that mm -hmm. the Colts Absolutely. aren't so vulnerable when Buckner and Grover have to be spelled. But, yeah, you talk about just guys that are elite at their positions, especially now that Aaron Donald is retired. That's the force. JJ, Buckner. this guy, uh, leadership is one thing that he brings. He's an older player, but still a dominant player. But there's other intangibles. Give me some that, that, that make him what he is. And arguably, like you said, the most indispensable defensive players the Colts have. So when I asked Ryan Kelly today uh, about, you know, what's kind of stood out to him about DeForest Buckner right. since, since 2020, he was like, that guy's car is always – he's always got the first spot in the lot because he's here at 5.30 in the morning getting a lift in, getting treatment in. Like, it is not for nothing right. that this guy doesn't miss games. I mean, remember, what was that, 2022 where he played with that big gigantic brace yeah, right. on his arm? Didn't miss a single game. The, the work that you put in to keep your body in a, as ready shape as possible right. to play through the rigors of a season when you're, you are quite literally in the middle of over a thousand pounds of humans to go try to make plays like that is a lot. And it bucks ability to lead by example in that sense with his work ethic, that if you are a young player walking in this building and you aren't matching what DeForest Buckner is doing, you're not giving yourself the best chance to succeed in the NFL. Right, right. And then on top of that, you know, Zaire Franklin said it today too. He's like, Buck keeps me in check. Buck is the guy who's like, come on, Z. And you know, he's like, right, all right, maybe, right. You know, maybe I should you know, take a step back, maybe be a little quiet here. Like, Buckner's experience playing in the Super Bowl, a game, by the way, with, in which he dominated that Super Bowl against the Chiefs where Mahomes wound up coming back and winning it. Right. Buck had, what, two sacks, something mm -hmm. like that in the game. This is a guy who – is constantly doing whatever he can to get back to that moment and then win it. And he's the guy who, if he's leading, everyone else needs to follow that guy. Yeah, and just in terms of on the field, like intangible stuff that maybe not the, the common fan is, is going to notice. I mean, the diehards obviously take, take heed to it. But just throughout the course of the season still, to this day, the amount of double teams he's continually – seeing i mean what is what is the number since 2020 60%. like 60 yeah it's like over 60 percent still the double team rate is still there so that just speaks obviously 
the respect that other teams pay to him, uh, and, he, and he still wins. And he still wins. I mean, the pass rush rate rate is still very high, despite seeing two and three people and, and, and guys chipping on him. Um, so that's obviously really big for the exterior pass rush, right? The guys on the ends. I mean, the Colts, we forget, still had 51 sacks last year as a team. You want to see that obviously be consistent. You want the sack total to be a little bit more meaningful, if you will, come in the right places, right? Crunch time, fourth quarter, you know, more pressures on the quarterback. But I think that's where DeForest Buckner comes in, where he consistently is pushing the pocket back into the quarterback, letting the guys on the outside feast, continuously stops the run. I mean, on average, he has like 70 tackles per season since he joined the Colts. I think he ranks second all time in Colts history in tackles among defensive tackles, and he's been here four years. Wow. Like, that's so, a hilarious stat. Yeah. So he, he certainly is, it goes without saying, the most one of the most important players on this defense, and the entire defense is back. They're running it back, and without DeForest Buckner here for the long term, I think it would have been hard to kind of find that – you know, punch that the Colts defense just, needs. Just like real quick context to that number about the double teams. Mm -hmm. That's basically what like Aaron Donald and Chris Jones see. You're talking about two guys who, you know, Aaron Donald, obviously before he retired, these are two guys who are making over 30 million a year, right? right? These are the two consensus best defensive tackles in the NFL for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then there's Buck right there with those guys. Uh, you look at sack totals. It's Aaron Donald or Chris Jones, Aaron Donald, DeForest Buckner since 2020. He is right up there with the best defensive tackles in the league, and that's why he's sticking around. That's why the Colts made it a priority to get a deal done with him a year before he hits free agency. Before we throw to that interview, we sat down earlier with DeForest. Feather and DeForest's cap, as far as respect goes from the organization, they didn't have to extend him. They didn't have right. to. They didn't have to, but yeah, they did. He, he's coming back in the last year of his deal. Right. That's right. And, that's and right. This, was, this was different than with Zaire Franklin, where – Zaire was his contract didn't match the right. the, the play that the he play, had. Sure. DeForest Buckner signed a market rate extension when the Colts traded for him in 2020. Right. Right. He now signed another one, but you know, yeah, you could have said you're going to play out this last year and then we'll deal with it after the end of the season, but this was like no, there there is not even a shot. We want right. you Lock sniffing free agency. And I also think too this this I think is part of the message that has been sent yes. this off season that I mean, obviously, everybody knows that, you know, the, the Colts are they, – they take care of their own. They grow their own, develop, resign. Obviously, that's, that's how the Colts want to be built and have been built under Chris Ballard. But I think of it, too, you look at this defense, all 22 starters are coming back on both sides of the ball, obviously all 11 starters on defense. But I think I did the math the other day. With Buckner now back, it means that I think 10 veterans on this team are, are – under contract through at least the 2026 season. All right, so you got 11 rookies from last year's draft class, 10 veterans. So basically the message is, boys, it's time to go. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what we believe in, right? Th these are the guys we know we can win with. The consistency is there. It's been there at times. Obviously on the defensive side of the ball, the next step is here, and again, I know I'm on a tangent, but it's time to win more close games. It's time to close games out, get more consistent pass rush. We can't win big. We can't go where we want to go in the playoffs if we're giving up a high point total, which has been the case the last two years, finishing 28th in, in total points allowed. But I just think in year number three under Gus Bradley, there's just too much talent on this defensive side of the ball to not be making the playoffs now. And that, that's not me – Speaking for for Matt Taylor, that's Chris. Those, those are Chris Ballard's words. Mm -hmm. You know that was his message at the end of the season. We should be competing now for division championships, and I don't think, based on the nucleus that's here, there's there's going to be no reason that can't happen. That's what makes me so excited for this upcoming season. That the Colts were an eyelash away from making the playoffs with a backup quarterback last year that had to play 13 games. Right. You put all of this together now with Anthony Richardson healthy. I think you're going to see a really, really fun season. And those veterans in that locker room know it as well. Let's catch up with DeForest right now. Sign the extension right there. J.J. Stankovic earlier today caught off with the big man. All right, I'm J.J. Stankovic, joined here by Colts defensive tackle DeForest Buckner. DeForest, congratulations on signing a contract extension on yes, Monday. Sir. With the Colts, just what does it feel like to know you're going to be here in Indy for a little while longer? Yeah, um, appreciate it, JJ. I mean, it's it means a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
four years ago, you know, um, Ballard and the Ursays brought me in, um, you know, to do a job and, um, and you know, try to help this team and, and lead, you know, help lead this team. And, uh, I mean, just a, it's just a surreal feeling, you know, being able to, to, to come back uh, for a couple of extra years and, you know, just the, the faith that Ballard has in me, you know, as a player, as a person, it uh, means a lot. This whole off season for the Colts has been kind of defined by keeping their own and, mm -hmm. you know, investing in their own, whether it's been Kenny, Grove, yeah. Z, now you getting this extension, Taekwon coming back. Mm -hmm. What do you think that speaks to the organization, the work you guys have put in, yeah. and just the, the level that you guys can now reward the organization? No, yeah, I mean, I, it means a lot. You know what I mean? Just a, an organization that believes in, in the guys that they invested in over the years and uh, they continue to invest in us. Um, you know, to take this, you know, team to new heights. And, um, you know, when I got here, a lot of those guys were really young. You know, they were young guys, didn't have a whole lot of experience. And, you know, just obviously, um, you know, gaining all that experience over the couple, past couple of years. And, you know, we're, you know, key, you know, keystones in the, within the team, within the organization. And being able to keep everybody in-house has been amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited to move forward and, you know, get the, get the show on the road, man. Grove and Buck together again. Yes, sir. I mean, that... That, that pairing has been so good for this defense. It's kind of been almost the heartbeat yeah. of this defense. Mm -hmm. You guys both having that experience playing together, now getting to play together for a couple more years here. Yeah. Where can you guys both take your games playing off each other? Man, we can continue to get better each and every year. I feel like, you know, since, uh, you know, since I got here back in 2020, um, you know, our chemistry, hit it, we hit it off the bat. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just each and every year we just push each other, whether it's in drills, you know, whatever it is, you know, we're always co we're, we're competing against each other to make each other better. And um, that's, the, that's the, the relationship you want, you know, amongst your teammates. And um, that's where we're able to play at such a high level. And uh, it's so fun watching Grove, you know, over the years, the, the player that he's, you know, become and um, the potential that he still has to be an even better player. So um, I, I'm just happy to be able to continue that over the next couple of years. Playing in the NFL, it is not a guarantee you're going to get a second contract. Mm -hmm. To earn a third contract yeah. – now, when you put pen to paper on Monday, what did you kind of reflect on? Man, just just all the hard work uh, that I continue to put in each and every each and every uh, year. You know, I'm a, this game. I'm, it's all about consistency. So being being able to do it over the past couple of years on a consistent basis, playing at a high level, I mean, it's very rewarding. You know what I mean? Uh, like you said. A second contract is hard, but a third one's even harder. So, and you know, I, I can't just—it's not just me. You know, um, my uh, my rock at the house. You know, my wife. You know, she's pushed me through a lot of adversity. Um, you know, a lot of uh, you know op mental obstacles that I've had along the way, and she's helped me get through. You know, through those obstacles and uh, been there in my corner um, since day. You know, since since I stepped uh, foot in this league. So, I mean, it's been it's been a blessing to have her by my side as well. You're a, a Hawaii kid. Mm -hmm. You played your college ball at Oregon. You played your first four years in the NFL in San Francisco, all on the yeah. West Coast. You're not a Hoosier. Like <laughs> no. you, you're you're here in Indiana. What, yeah. What's your favorite part about living in this part of the country? You know, um, I would just say, you know, just being able to come here back in 2020. I was just starting. You know, my wife and I were just starting our family, and uh, we got two beautiful little boys uh, now. That, um, and just being able to raise them, you know, in, in this environment, in this culture, um, out here in Indy, it's been amazing. The people have been amazing. Um, yeah, it's just like we, we were able to, like you said, I'm, I'm, we're both from the, you know, the West Coast and I'm from Hawaii and being able to build our little village out here, um, you know, with the people out here, it's been amazing, man. And we did, you know, there's no place we want it to be. You know what I mean? Our, our family is, is rooted here. Is that just, like, how meaningful is that to not only have your roots in a team and have yeah. your, your impact as a captain of mm -hmm. a pro bowler yeah. with a team, but to now have your roots with a family yeah. in, in one place and you get to stay here longer now yeah. with this extension. It means, it means the world. Um, you know, you, you don't find that, you know, it's hard to find that, especially in our business and uh, you know, just, just seeing how happy uh, my boys are, my wife is and how happy I am, you know, with the relationships I've built that built out here. Um, it, it's just, like I said, it's been a blessing, man, you know? Uh, so being able to, that was our, my priority number one was making sure I was I was staying here, staying put. Um, and God willing, uh, you know, he he blessed blessed my family to be able to stay out here and uh, remain Hoosiers. <laughs> it's been a big week for the Buckner family. You obviously signed the extension, but your son, your oldest son, yeah. debuts in T-ball yeah, over the sir. weekend. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. Yeah. He did. Uh, 
how, how did was, he do? I mean, he did he did great for his, his first game. You know, I honestly thought he was going to get a little shy with everybody, all the eyes watching him, but uh, he embraced the moment, and, you know, he had a great time. So it, it was a lot of fun. I, I was like talking with you about being a dad because yeah. just a, a quick aside story here. In February, I took my kids to an indoor play place <laughs> up in uh, up in Westfield, yeah. and uh, they're running around, and my son's just staring at the dinosaur setup in one of the party rooms. <laughs> and here comes DeForest holding yeah. like four pizzas and a cooler with drinks, <laughs> setting up for his kid's birthday party. Yeah. It's so cool seeing the work you do on the field, but mm -hmm. also the kind of the dad you are off the Thank field. Thank you, so. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean it's, I mean it's a, it's a, you know, it's a being a dad is a full time job, and uh, honestly. Um, besides football, it's the best job I've ever had. So, I mean, it's it's great. Well, Indy's happy to have you here. Happy to have you back with the Colts. DeForest Buckner signing a contract extension on Monday. Congrats again, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go Colts. JJ, give me pull one thing from that interview. Pull yeah. one thing from that quick interview you had with DeForest that said to you, golly, this, this guy is a different animal. Not only is he fills a room up with his athleticism and his size and everything like that, but as far as being a, def a, 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 a dominant, I couldn't think of the word, the dominant interior lineman mm -hmm. like he is, and, and going into a veteran status like he has, <laughs> just give me something you pulled away from that interview so, that said this cat is different. Can you different. say the whole interview? Well, I, I, I want to <laughs> say this. He's different in that, and I asked him this, and, and he's from Hawaii, mm -hmm. right? He played college ball at Oregon. Then he played for the 49ers. So he's always been, you know, on one kind of part of the Pacific Coast. And then he comes here to central Indiana, a completely different environment, and he loves it here. Yeah. His yeah. family loves it here. And I, I kind of filled it in there, but, like, so I'm at an uh, uh, indoor play place in Westfield back in February. And my kids are running around, and then all of a sudden one of my sons goes, and he's looking at one of the private party rooms that had – it's all dinosaur-themed. And he's just kind of staring in there. And I'm like, hey, buddy, it's, you know, it's not our room. Looks like someone's about to set up for a birthday. And I turn around, and there's DeForest Buckner holding six pizzas and a cooler with drinks, wheeling it in, just going back and forth from his car, setting up for his kid's birthday. And, you know, I chat with him for a little bit. But, like, seeing stuff like that, yeah. we're like, it's not just that DeForest Buckner is a great football player, a great leader, but, like, he's a great dad. Yeah. And that's really, like, that's really inspirational. I think to, you know, someone like myself, I'm sure Mayte, you can identify too, you know, who are dads of little kids. Sure. And well, hey, if, you know, DeForest Buckner can make time for his kids and he can be the kind of dad that he wants to be while still playing in the NFL and doing everything that it takes to play at a high level, like, what the hell am I doing? Right. You know, <laughs> right, right. like it, it's, it even that leadership and that, hey, follow his example even goes beyond just what the guy does. For his teammates. A special breed, obviously, watching them coming in from, like you said, coming out of Oregon, going to San Fran, then, you know, being in the heart of his career right here. It's amazing. A lot of players were in today. A lot of players caught up with uh, with a few of us. Mayte and I, we sat down with Michael Pittman Jr., and when you brought up DeForest's kids, that's what reminded me. And I said it to Pittman Jr. either. We've literally watched this cat grow up in front of us, mm -hmm. and his whole demeanor and his mentality and his approach to this game has now changed because he has two youngins at home. Two youngins, and he's also, I think, deliberately responsible, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. I mean, we talked all about the farm and how we got into that and why it's so important to him. And, you know, he's an outdoors guy. Yeah. He's an outdoorsy dude. He loves to obviously farm and hunt and fish. He just likes to be outside in the elements. And I think, again, I'm paraphrasing Michael Pittman Jr., but all of that just kind of reminds him of – how, how special this is like I can be able to do all this and I can afford all of this and and I'm blessed to do all of this stuff because I play football mm -hmm. and I've been given the ability to play football at a high level and with that it can be taken away at any time because of the nature of this business you know the the violent sport that he plays and I think it just reminds him to, to get up early do your work you know Go through the process. Embrace the hard, if you will. The hard is what makes it special. I sound like Jimmy Dugan from uh, A League right. of Their Own. The hard is what makes <laughs> it great. And I think you know Michael Pittman Jr. embraces that, and that has gotten him, I think, tougher. He, uh, 
He said it. He's doing chores before he comes to this building. Yeah. Even during the season, he's doing chores when he returns from this building. <laughs> so, I mean, it's amazing, and I'm glad that he's On top of up. having a demanding full-time job he's, such as this, we, right? We, yeah, other players spoke as well. But one last thing on Pittman Jr., I want to get J.J. in on this. I asked him a question, how can he get better? I want your mm-hmm. answer on this. How can he get better with different – not with different, but with playmakers around him, yeah. more playmakers. How do you think Michael Pittman Jr. becomes better with better playmakers around him? I just think Pittman, Pittman over the last couple of years, he's played in a compressed offense. Totally. Where 2022, 2023, this is not an offense. Shrink. That, right. Yeah, you're, play, shrunk. you're playing 20 yards right. within the line of scrimmage for the most part. Right. You get a guy like Anthony Richardson. Get a guy like Jonathan Taylor. Hopefully that maybe unlocks something in Alec Pierce. But then for Michael Pittman Jr., mm-hmm. that's a guy I, I think he has more down the field ability. Mm-hmm. It, we saw, I mean, like the, the plays that are stuck in my head about with Pittman are that game against San Francisco in the rain where he goes up and he mosses that guy yeah. yep. for a, 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 was that a touchdown, I think? Yeah, two, uh, yeah, two yeah, of them in that two game. Two of them in that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. The, the first game against Baltimore he played where he did that. Helmet the came off. The second game, yeah. well, yeah. no, that was the first game in 2021. The second game in Baltimore where the helmet comes off. Yeah. Like, Michael, you see him play, and he's so physical, but he hasn't had a ton of opportunities to show that because this isn't an offense that's just kind of, you know, gets the ball to him more than 10, 15 yards down the field. You look at his numbers last year. He led the NFL in catches on RPOs, and it, like, wasn't even close. He was, like, seven or eight ahead of, I think, Zay Flowers, who was number two. Like, all it was was just it was RPO slant, RPO slant, RPO slant, which he's really good at. But I think there's more that we haven't seen, like you said, Jeffrey, with those playmakers. Well, I think Anthony Richardson coming back is going to be just – it's going to be enormous for everybody. But I really think with Michael Pittman Jr., and he talked about it today, Jeffrey, that when he first broke into the league in 2020, he was playing more on the outside. Mm-hmm. But because of the nature of the quarterbacks and the style of offense that they were kind of forced to play out of necessity, he came more you know, inside, more of a slot guy. And we kind of joke, but not really, like – He's a wide receiver, but he's also a tight end. I mean, I still think he's going to dominate and make his hay in the middle of the field between the numbers. But I do agree with you. That's not to say they can't scheme him up more on the outside. And what he said today, that's so encouraging. And, you know, it's I I didn't really think about it in in his terms, but he's so right. There's going to be more scramble opportunities in this offense with Anthony Richardson just getting out of the pocket and making plays. We saw that with Carson Wentz a couple years ago on just, hey, backyard football, time to go down the field, high point the ball. Michael Pittman, Michael Pittman Jr. can do that along with Alec Pierce. I think inevitably you're going to see way more explosivity from this offense, and I think it's going to come from everybody just because of the way Anthony Richardson is going to play and the things that he's going to bring to this offense that, no disrespect, Gardner Minshew couldn't couldn't allow. Double J, do we get any update on Anthony? Where we're at with yeah. this far, as far as where he is in rehab and, you know, the next couple of weeks of where we're at, as far as on-field stuff, it's coming up. Yeah, an encouraging update from Shane Steichen today. You know, he's progressing well. Um you know, they still might hold him back a little bit when you get into OTAs just because they there's no reason to push it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, right. you know, the, the Colts have been very clear that they are going to follow the, the advice of the doctors to the letter of the law. It's, it's not like he doesn't need to be ahead of schedule has been kind of the, the, the mantra about him. But I think just even getting him in back in the building – for these meetings that are taking place now. We're right now in phase one of OTAs. Mm -hmm. You can't do any on-field work with coaches. It's just strength and conditioning and meetings. But those meetings of just, hey, let's refresh some stuff. Let's refresh the offense for you. Now that, hey, you're back as QB1. There's no... You're not playing, so you know take a you know take a back seat. But you know (laughs) this is Gardner Minshew's show to run. Right, right. right. Uh, Now it's back to being his show to run. And just these refreshers to get that base back for him. Mm-hmm. This is a really important stretch for Anthony Richardson in the next three, four, five weeks before the Colts can even get back on the practice field. Well, he's uh, chomping at the bit, as they say. Mate, we saw uh, – we'll get to you with Zaire Franklin in a minute, but Ryan Kelly, the old war, the old war horse, the centerman up there, <laughs> love it. I mean, he's talking. What did he have to say to the media today as far as this offensive line coming back intact? Well, he was actually the one guy I, I didn't get to see today. Okay. Uh, just we were doing Pittman, so didn't cross paths with him, so – um, I'm, I'm looking forward to going back and, and hearing that conversation. Well, here, but I'll, let I'll, me try it again. J.J., <laughs> yeah, well, while we were in with Michael Pittman Jr., Ryan I can, Kelly. I can paraphrase. <laughs> yeah. what, what did Rhino have to say? I, I just think it was interesting hearing from him about 
how rare it is to bring back the same five on mm-hmm. a starting offensive line. And and he made mention of like, yeah. it's not just the, the that starting five, but it's like the whole room. You know, Danny Pinter's back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the 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 backups, Blake Freeland's back, guys like that. And I think that just speaks to you know he he talked even about how Tony Soprano Jr. kind of goes to bat for these guys. And the, but look at this offensive line. There was nowhere that you're sitting there and being like, got to make an improvement there. You know, right? Uh, uh, friend of the official podcast, our our guy Will Fries, like the season he had. You're not thinking about what you know replacing will fries you're no. thinking about holy cow this guy's gonna be a free agent after this year right we got to think about you know maybe after the season retaining this right guy. right so that that that's a such an impressive thing given where this line was a year ago and all the questions about it of really you're bringing back the same starting five and now it's like you're really bringing back the same starting five right it is a completely different tone with this line. A lot more information will be coming up over the next couple of weeks. Colts.com always has the latest. JJ's latest. Go ahead, Mate. No, you, you mentioned Zaire Franklin. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to interject one thing. I mean, I, I was really floored with his comments in a, in a good way, and he's right. I mean, I, he I've wants been, to win. I've been doing this now for, I mean, I've been covering this team for almost two decades, and I've been working for the team for 14 seasons now. I, I've never seen anything like what you talked about, JJ. 22 starters coming back. I've never seen all 11 guys on either side of the ball coming all return. Back, right. And Zaire Franklin spoke on that today. He's like, for some of these guys, like with Kenny Moore and Zaire Franklin, we've been, been playing together now for, for seven years. And you look at this free agency window this offseason that the Colts have, have uh, that they're under right now, you got Franklin back, Kenny Moore back, Julian Blackman, uh, Zaire, excuse me, uh, DeForest Buckner. Grover Stewart. Grover Stewart. So everybody's under the same window, the same time frame. And when, when DeForest got here, some of these guys were kind of young, up and coming, a lot of potential. Now that potential has been realized. And again, there's just too much talent on this defense for it not to be elite. And so you look at it. Everybody's under the same window of contract. Time is now. And that's what Zaire Franklin said. We, we, can't, we can't leave here and have nothing to show for it. We have to have something tangible to, to represent in terms of our time together here because there's too much continuity and there's too much talent on that side of the ball, not for it to be, I think, sizable. And that's what's exciting when, when you talk about Zaire Franklin. And he is, I think, just the, the unquestioned leader on this team. We've talked about that before in the past. There's a lot of leaders in that locker room, but I think, I think Zaire Franklin is it. Yeah. I think he's the guy. And so year number three under Gus Bradley, I think he's sending the message that – and I think it's good. I, I think it's a, it's a good sense of urgency to have starting in April that, hey, when we come out for training camp, we need to be good. and we need, to, we need to be good right freaking away right. you know what i was thinking about it as z was saying that yeah was like okay the draft's in what eight days nine days from whenever you listen to this the the colts are going to add players who are going to compete to start but no one in that draft class is just going to be like all right here you go yeah just roll the ball out you're the starter because you're bringing back literally everyone who started for you last year so that's going to create, I think, really great opportunities for these rookies to come in. Right. Hey, here's what the standard is. Go compete to it. And if you're the 15th pick, the 46th pick, the 82nd pick, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. you're going to have to compete with guys who have been here. It's not, and we signed this mercenary for, you know, one year, $3 million, and it's pretty easy to unseat this guy. It's guys right. who have equity in this building, right. guys who have strong relationships with their teammates that now that's those are the guys you're going to have to beat out. And I think that makes everyone better when you get into training camp. Best players will play. Hey, coming up, we're going to talk with Anthony Costanzo, Lara and Overton, who's not here today. Caught up with him just a couple of days ago, the superhero from the West Coast, Anthony Costanzo. This was a great interview. Yeah, this he's was, a good I, I listened to the whole thing. This is a great interview. And he's a good dude, and I really do think he's going to be in Hollywood one day. Not saying he's not now, but, I mean, I seriously think he could do a Hollywood movie as a superhero. Anthony Costanzo, the big He looks like one. He does look like one for starters, but his whole mentality has changed and everything, and you can find (laughs) that out. Um, That's coming up in a minute. But uh, one question, and it's a tough one because I'm playing the devil's advocate in this chair, and I'm reading online, and I'm hearing what I'm hearing about the draft and everything coming up. Mate mentioned it earlier. JJ, I'm going to start with you. Two consecutive seasons, 28th defensively in giving up points. Two consecutive seasons, 28th. 
Everybody wants playmakers. Bring bring in this guy for Anthony Richardson. Get this other. Trade up the next four first-rounders to go get this guy. Not so fast. Guys, defensively speaking, you're not shocked. And we've talked about the cornerback position and edge and whatnot. But are you really shocked if Chris Ballard sticks at 15 and takes a defensive player strictly based on those two stats that I gave you earlier from the last two years? No. I mean, absolutely. That, that, that would be – a, a very reasonable thing to do when you're looking at your team and you're saying, where can we add talent? Where can we add competition? Right. And, okay, yeah, th- this defense did keep everyone from last year. But, okay, y- you, that doesn't mean you can't just stay the same. You don't want inertia to set in. You want to be, okay, let's go get everyone better, and if we need to jolt a room by adding someone to it, let's go do it. I mean, I, I think if you're looking position-wise um, – I don't think you you say anything's off the table, even though you did just commit a lot to defensive tackle, say with Buckner, Stewart, Raquan Davis. Right, right. Maybe that would be a surprise, but also if a guy's sitting there at 15 and you think this guy's the next Aaron Donald, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you take him? Right. You know, so there's that that would absolutely be a path for the Colts. But Shane Steichen talked about it today. I thought this was a really good answer. Uh, he got asked like, "You're an offensive guy. Do you have to almost fight the urge to?" pound the table for offensive guys <laughs> in the draft room. And he goes, yeah, that's a good, you know, yeah, but I just want a guy who's going to help us win. Yeah. Right? And at 15, you have a chance to make, to get a difference maker, especially if there are four, maybe five quarterbacks that are off the board. That means you're picking 10th. Right. right exactly. Right, you know, you right. don't, Hey, for the first time in 12 years, you don't need that guy. Sure. So that's great. <laughs> so right. let's let that, that is something that then hopefully leads to a player who maybe is higher up in the way that you stack it, right. coming to you at 15. Now Mate's turn. Now Mate's turn. The reason I'm saying that is, hey, offensive league, you know this, points. What, what's he going to do to me right no, now? No, I'm not what, saying. What I'm just saying. Jeffrey goes, right I'm going to bring a couple <laughs> curveballs. I know. I just balls. sent a couple curveballs. Yeah. So Mate, I'm saying it's an <laughs> offensive league. You look at what they've done. You know, I, I was going to say Kansas <clears> City, but, boy, he Spagnola had that defense rolling last year. But I'm saying, uh, are, are you shocked if this if – this, the chips fall where they may, and they say, hey, defense is where we're going with our first pick. Well, no, not at all. And, and it's it's all coupling what J.J. said, too. But I just think, too, like you look at the general consensus of the draft, mm-hmm. uh, there, there, are, there is going to be inevitably so many offensive players that go in the top ten, and you're going to be pushed. The, those elite top defensive players are going to be there. So then you have to kind of ask yourself, this is draft 101. I mean, it's certainly more complicated than I'm making it out to be. But then you have to ask yourself – What's the better play here? Because we are bringing back so many starters, so we don't have, like, immediate glaring needs, per se, but you do want the the right depth. But you have to start asking yourself, what's a better play for us? Do we want to draft the the first or second best corner Mm -hmm. or defensive end, or do we want to get the fourth or fifth best wide receiver, knowing that the talent pool at wideout is always so deep? We can get a a playmaker. I mean, Josh Downs is the perfect example. We can get an instant – playmaker contributor at wide receiver made or maybe later in the draft while knowing that the you know the the cornerback depth isn't as as ample if you will so um that's when the trade up trade back discussions always come into play but it's going to be fascinating I don't think you can go wrong to be honest with right, you. right right I'm, I'm with you on that at 15 I don't think he can go wrong I would start another conversation, but we're going to get to Anthony Costanzo because, J.J., we'll do it next week. There's a lot of offensive tackles that are stinking good football players in this draft, and I'm saying a lot of good players are going to be available and at Braden 15. And Braden Smith's coming up in free agency That's next right. year. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And young Bernard Ryman obviously doing well over the first course of his two years, right. but, you know, who knows what happens. So a lot more will be answered, but speaking of offensive tackles, the great, the big man, and he was a stalwart here for a lot of years in this Colts offense. I'm telling you, Anthony Costanzo has changed. Obviously, he's dropped a lot of weight, moved kind of out to the West Coast, but he's a different, little bit of a different cat these days that he's not putting the bonnet on on Sundays. Enjoy. Well, we welcome in one of the all-time greats to wear the horseshoe, the left tackle. I, I tell you what, when Anthony Costanzo – was in the building. That's all we had to say. If he's in the building, he's starting. Hello, this is a man that did not miss football games from high school to college to professional. You, If you were eligible to play, you were playing, and obviously with a long career here in Indianapolis at the left tackle position. Uh, the first question is the obvious one. Do you miss the grind of the day-to-day of this league where you're at in your life now? Yeah, you know, the – 
the, the one thing that I met, I mean, no, uh, the, the <laughs> grind of the day to day, I, I loved practice. I loved, you know, the, the getting, getting an opportunity to get better every day, being around the guys. I, I miss the guys more than anything, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of having those guys to go through things with every day, seeing people, you know, just being around uh, a group of people who are going through the same stuff you are, uh, you know, every hour of the day. That's probably what I miss the absolute most. Um, yeah, and I always loved practice. What I don't miss is that that overarching stress of what's going to happen on game day. You know, <laughs> if if I get beat for a sack, that's going to be very bad for me and my the family name on the back of my jersey <laughs> and the team name on the front of my jersey. So yeah, let's uh, you know, it's like that the overarching stress I don't miss. But yeah, that day to day grind I actually really really enjoyed. You were a pillar, it has been described, um, of this organization, of the roster, of course, in your time here. It's always so good to get you back. I got the note that you were going to be in town, and I was like, clear the schedule to get (laughs) AC back here. What brings you back to Indiana? Because you're in California for the most part now. Yeah, so my brother actually last year was like, we got to see the eclipse in totality. Like, this is a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, And he was talking about going to Texas or something. And then I saw the path, and I'm like – goes right through Indianapolis. Let's go to Indianapolis. I got people to see. I got, you know, I wanted to stop by the Colts facility. So uh, ultimately the purpose for the trip out here was the eclipse, but I get to see a lot of friends and uh, I get to come around this building and see a bunch of people that I haven't seen in a while too. In the opportunities, because you don't get many to come back into the building. You've been back to some games here or there. Yep. Who are the people that you're like, I got to go see anytime that you are around the building or, you know, at the stadium? Jeff Gorman is number one. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, it, it's really all the support staff, everybody who's still here that that was here when I was here, you know, in the equipment room, um, in the training room, uh, in the weight room. Uh, and DT, you know, DT has been here since, you know, since I first got drafted here. Uh, I'm going to go see the guys in the back. The the uh, I'll go see Ballard and see the, the crew back there. Uh, it's really anybody who's here who was here when I was here was a big part of my life. So it's like if they were here, then uh, I want to see them because – they had a big impact in my life. Anthony, you had to replace what you brought for over a decade to this game. And to me, to even see you on Tuesdays, your day off and stuff, oh. you were ticked off. Yeah. I mean, I, because you were sore and you got to get ready for the Wednesday yeah. and then you got to get ready for the Thursday and put it back up on. How do you replace that in your life? Because that's a, that's a as I call it, it's a, it's a violent car crash bar room once a week, f- big old fight, Donnybrook, and now that's not in your life. How do you kind of take that sort of intensity you have and shift it now after your career? It's it's hard. Um, football, so football, you know, is a violent game, and it's a game where you get to kind of express that violence in <laughs> yeah. a, in a safe spot. So um, I definitely miss that. You know, that's something that you you can't do as a normal person. Like it's just illegal. <laughs> like you, you you can't do it. So uh, just having to t- tame that back. I still work out really hard. Um, I basically live my life as if it's a permanent off season mm-hmm. now. So it's not like I'm just kind of like kind of getting away from everything. I've created a schedule that is basically the same schedule that I would have adhered to in the off season. It's just that now I don't have a season to prepare for. So it's Are like, you in the best shape of your life right now? Um, yeah, I, you know, I would, I would say I'm pretty close to it. If not, I mean, just, uh, I think when I was playing, it's a different shape. Sure, sure. So right now I'm probably in the best, like, you know, physical condition. Uh, when I was playing, you know, I, I would say that would be, that would be the best shape, despite my actual shape not being as good. Then <laughs> my you know ability to play football and and be as strong and as flexible, I was probably in the best shape ever. But uh, I'm feeling good now. I'll tell you that much. My joints feel a lot better. That's for looking good sure. too, Anthony. Looking Appreciate good too. It. I remember when you announced your retirement and you joked that one of the things you looked forward to was just not having to eat so much. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like the caloric <laughs> intake yes. to maintain that was a lot. It was daunting. It's like I would say. Of anything in my life that is like the biggest change, the fact that I enjoy eating food again has been such a positive change in my life from in, in retirement. It's it's like I can't express how much different it is. Like the fact that when I eat, it's something I look forward to. And like if I if I get a little bit overstuffed, it's like, oh, you know, like that was great rather than just constantly living yeah. in the state of like being overstuffed because I have to constantly maintain that weight. Cause I'm naturally not a huge guy. Like I'm not one of these guys who has to keep his weight down. Mm-hmm. I always had to keep it up. So yeah, it's really nice to be able to enjoy food again. When you first moved out to California, I know you were doing a whole lot of biking, obviously yep. taking advantage of the scenery. What's keeping you active right now? Uh, I still bike. I still go to the gym. Um, I go on a lot of walks. We've got a dog that I, I walk. Um, and, 
actually I took up snowboarding uh, as as a nice. as a hobby because I I always wanted to, but I was never going to because uh, if I got injured snowboarding, that would be very bad yeah. for a lot of reasons. So once I retired, I was able to take it up, and uh, I love getting up on the mountain and just kind of flying down. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Hey, before we talk some of your teammates that are getting some awards. Uh, recently, you when when you came here, when you signed here with the Colts, the family still owned that restaurant yep. in Illinois. It's no longer there, but mm-hmm. I have to get back to cooking because we would talk when you were playing, like, "Hey, what are you cooking this week?" Yep. Is cooking still a big part of your life? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, um, I, I've really gotten into uh, into meal planning, like just because cooking every meal every day gets a little daunting. But when you can, I, I again part of my structure I, yeah. I truly live my life structured as if I'm still a football player at the beginning of the week I literally write out Monday through Sunday and I have every every meal that I'm going to eat so then I go to the grocery store I know the exact amount of groceries I need to get I'm a very structured nice. person and it's uh it's really nice and you know you work in like oh I'll be going to a restaurant for this meal <laughs> and for this meal sometimes when friends are like hey you want to go out to eat I'm like ah, it doesn't fit into the schedule <laughs> but I guess I guess that I can move things around so, yeah, it's just, you know, finding kind of living in that same structured world of that I lived in with football, but just now the structure just comes from me, like a, like a weirdo instead of from <laughs> an, an external source. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jeffrey mentioned uh, we're going to talk to you about one of your teammates, uh, Dwight Freeney, and the fact he's going into Canton, going to the Hall of Fame later this year. Coming in as a rookie, can you describe for someone – what that assignment was like going into training camp when you had to face off, not just that guy, but then the opposite side, you knew it was Mathis coming from there. Yeah, there's, uh, I think the, I could just say that in one story that uh, sticks in my mind, which was after my first practice, you know, I was a first round pick coming into the NFL. And after my first practice, maybe my first two practices, maybe, maybe it was my first practice in pads. I remember calling my dad and just being like, I am the worst <laughs> tackle in the history of the NFL. I cannot play in this league because I just got a, I was just getting abused in practice by Freeney and Mathis. And I, you know, I don't think I go to him. I'm like, I don't think I blocked Dwight Freeney once this entire <laughs> practice. And I remember him saying like, I don't think too many people do. And for his career, I mean, uh, actually to this day, Ben Ajelana, who I got drafted with will send me uh, like YouTube videos. And they're usually Dwight Freeney against, you know, some of the biggest names to ever play left tackle. And he's abusing everybody he played against. And I like, I'm like, I'm not sure he got blocked cleanly once in his entire career. Like he was, he truly was that good. And uh, he made me a lot better. I'm not sure I made him better at that point <laughs> in both of our careers, but I like to think that I did. But yeah, he uh, he deserves he deserves to go into Canton for sure. Wonderful. Uh, obviously, the stories from you know your offensive line and you know the guys that come in, come out, and so you were a stalwart here. Your love for this game, did it carry over till after your careers? I'm talking about Sundays. Do you sit down and watch football, or do you watch Colts football specifically? Colts football is on my big screen. That is the that is the number one that I've got. And then I've got all the other games on my iPad or on my computer. So I've, I've got all the other games. When the Colts are on a commercial, I'll watch the other games. Or The Colts are my number one. Sometimes I'll turn off all the other games if, it, if it's getting a little heated. But I, I watch every play. Um, I, I actually just saw – Bernard Ryman. Oh, here we go. I that- just saw him in the in the hallway, and I'm like, "Hey, if you ever got any any questions, be feel free to ask me because I watch every single play that you play, and I know exactly what happens." So yeah, I definitely watch. I still watch the offensive line position specifically as an art form because uh, I really appreciate the different things that guys are able to do and kind of what goes into it, obviously, because it was my entire life. Hey, Jim Irsay, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> this consultant here should should be on the payroll if he's going to do some left tackle instructions yeah. for a young guy like Bernard Ryman. That's yeah. what I was going to. Do you watch do you watch footwork specifically? Or are you watching a play as a fan? Or are you watching it as, you know, a 10-plus year offensive tackle? I mean, I watch it as an offensive tackle. Like, I, I watch – yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know where the ball is. I don't watch the <laughs> right, ball right. when I'm playing. When I'm watching football, I watch the line play, um, and yeah, and I I still really enjoy it. I I watch it like it's film basically because that's the only. way. I mean, that's how I've watched football for as long as you know I can remember. Is it's basically been film, so that's what I still watch, and I and I love it. I mean, I I really on Sundays from morning till night I'm watching football. Awesome. Yeah. And when you played, that was such a unit of excellence with the guys who you were lining up next to each and every Sunday. What strides did you see in particular from that group 
last season under the guidance of Tony Sperano Jr., second year with a guy like Bernard Ryman? Yeah, uh, well, Bernard made huge strides. I mean, even in his first year from his first game to the last game, um, you know, he's he, he's going to be a stud for a long time. People are going to forget about me real quick, which is <laughs> ideal. That's what uh. you, as, a, as a lover of the Colts, <laughs> I, I want them to forget about me because Bernard is playing at the level that he is. And I think last year the huge strides they made as a unit were – when everyone was healthy, which is huge. I mean, people need to realize how huge it is when all the linemen are healthy and even when they're not nicked up. Like, if you can get a fully healthy – if you get those five guys mm. who play offensive line for the Colts fully healthy for a full season, I mean, they're going to be dominant. And uh, I think last year they did a really good job just being in unison in, in their pass protection. You could tell that uh, Coach Sperano did a nice job with them, making sure everybody knew – what to expect out of the guy next to them um, so that when they were blocking, they were blocking as a unit instead of five individuals. Uh, and I think they did a real nice job. Of the guys who you played with in this organization, who do you talk with the most? Who do you keep in touch with most still? I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go visit Muhort. Uh, I, I would say I probably talk to him the most. You know, he and I played uh, next to each other for a good chunk of time. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the linemen I played with, yeah. we still keep in touch with. You know, Joe Wright, I still talk with. I'm actually having dinner with all the, the linemen who are here currently tonight. So, nice. Yeah, there's... Let's get a camera on that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, stay I out of my it... personal life, Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> you know the rules. <laughs> hey, what was that one, that one memory of yours that sits at the mountaintop of your career here in the NFL when either you're walking off the field or you're in the locker room or leaving with your family after the game where you said, it doesn't get any better than this? You, you know what my favorite memory of playing in the NFL is when I caught a touchdown pass. <laughs> you kidding me? By the <laughs> way, one, one, you're one for one in your career. Which I, is believe quarterbacks, I believe quarterbacks are 158.3 <laughs> rating when throwing to me, so uh, it's a good way to end your career. But, yeah, uh, that was – that like that moment sticks out in my head. Like I remember it so vividly because I remember Reggie running into the huddle and he just looked at me and said, don't screw this up. And I'm like, don't screw what up? And then he called the play. And I'm like, oh, I'm about to score a touchdown pass. This is awesome. And my claim to fame, regardless of anything else that happened in my career, is that on a play, Reggie Wayne was used as a decoy so that I could get open to score a touchdown. How about that? Hey, I'll take it. Damn. The poor defender that had that coverage <laughs> and assignment. No, the, the beautiful thing is that there was no defender that was assigned to me, which is why I was so wide open. <laughs> I love it. One thing that I don't think many Colts fans would note, but you are not the only Costanzo family member with imprints on this organization. Great. Our content team puts out uh, a couple times a year these fantastic yep. illustrations yep. to the credit of your brother. Yeah, my, my brother's an incredible talent in terms of art, artistic ability. He does, I mean, he can do anything uh, drawing-wise and conceptually, the way that he can create backgrounds. I, I, the, when you look at those cartoons, don't just scroll through them. Look at all the little details that he puts in the background. Like and Easter like, eggs. Yeah, there's, he puts little Easter eggs in everything, and it's, uh, it's, it's really fun, and he takes a lot of pride in that stuff, and it, he will not put it forth until it is absolutely perfect. And, uh, yeah, he's pretty incredible. You'll see those. It's usually like 4th of July, mm -hmm. over the holidays, like Christmas time, kind of all of that is when we have seen a number of those. So it's the same meticulous nature that you practiced uh, when you were playing and that you still have as part of your very routine uh, regimen with your workouts and your eating and all of that. That is a consistent Costanzo family trait. Absolutely. And shameless plug, check out his Instagram <laughs> at C Bill Draw. C Bill Draw. That yeah. is the brother of <laughs> Anthony does, Costanzo. He does incredible stuff. It's, it's amazing. Hey, when Colts fans think of you, like we talked about, just an iron you know you're an iron man you showed up you played I always hated it when you were when you were injured on yep. the training table you couldn't even talk to him around then because yep. he was so ticked off but I don't he always talked to me I, uh, I was just, that was different <laughs> I was just always ticked off when I was talking to you Gorman that was, that was it but 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 do you think about stuff like that the the consistency that you had and and the ultimate thing as far as an individual franchise go is the ring of honor is that anything that's ever crossed your mind to be part of this ring of honor here in Indianapolis you know i that's up to Indianapolis. I, I, the biggest thing about my career that I look back on that I'm really proud of is the fact that when I retired, I could say I had no regrets. Mm -hmm. I, I had no regrets about the amount of time. Like, oh, I wish I would have, you know, concentrated more. I wish I would have put more time into this. I put everything that I had to be as successful as possible on the field. And sometimes I wasn't. Sometimes I was. Um, but what I can be look back and be extra proud of is the effort that I put forth and the fact that I put everything that I had to kind of give what I had for the, for the city, for the team and for my teammates ultimately. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 
accolades have never really been something that I was striving for. I just wanted to improve every day. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with the way that, that things turned out and the, way, the career that I had. Good. I hope there is not another, you know, major astrological event that has to happen to bring you back. <laughs> right. I hope that we can get you back at some point, you know, for a game this season just to, to hang out and enjoy. So it's always great to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. I being around the facility, it's nothing but nothing but good memories here. Yeah. If you're in Southern California and you see somebody take a wave in from the beach or bo <laughs> boogie boarding or cycling or, or mountain climbing, it might just be Anthony Costanza, one yeah. of the best to ever wear the horseshoe right here. He's back to say hello to you Colts fans and Alara and I. Appreciate yeah. the time. It's always fun catching up with you. My pleasure. And we will do it again in the future. I give you that promise. Love it. All right. Thanks so much to Anthony Costanza. <laughs>
See, I'm still searching for it. You but, are kind of a new sort yeah, of Hoosier, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know if I think does he's Portillo, the right guy to Does ask. Portillo's wow. have Portillo's a hamburger? A, they, you called it the right thing. Congrats, that's right. growth. Uh, do they have a hamburger? They do. It's very. Okay, good. then leave it there. Then that's it. That's what you want. You're going to get Portillo's. But, see, but so I, so I, you know, I, live up, I want a real I, answer I live from up this. North. Bubs is big. Bubs is good. Bubs is good. Bubs yeah. is good. Uh, I feel like there's. Uh, I still haven't been to Working Man's Friend. It's great. Got to get there. Yes. I know. Yeah. I know. Matt Wilkening, one of our, yeah. you know, pr- production. Uh, the guy who's behind all these the great things we do burger. in production. He looked at me like, I. What is wrong with you that you haven't been there? Right. Yeah. Like you know, I, like I had like two heads or something. Right. So I got to get there. We'll get you there. But yeah. I think he's your guy. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's there's so many. I mean, um, Union Jacks was always a really good burger. Um, is it still around? Yeah. Yeah, the Broad Ripple. I think okay. the one in Speedway is no longer with us. Um, I mean, yeah, Working Man's Friend. Um, gosh darn. Come on, guys. Don't give me the chains either. I don't want Shake Shack in there or nothing like that. You don't have uh, <laughs> Donna and Gary's you know, Corner Bar or the, anything the, down the Willard, in- The Willard down in Franklin. I know that's not in The Wheeler? The Willard. Oh, the Willard. The See, there Willard we go. Now down we're talking. In Franklin had a, a great, great burger. Um all right, we'll find them. See, here, here's my problem: is like I go to a restaurant, and we were talking about this before we came on. I eat a burger, and I'm just you put me to sleep. It's yeah, you want so it I is filling. I don't like get, Ron Burgundy. I don't get a ton of burgers anymore because I've hit that age now where like I don't metabolize that stuff it as well filling. as I used to. All right, so Run, running our out. production today is Connor Handel. Where are you going, Connor? The tap. The tap. Tap. Great burger. Real good burger. The is that a chain though? Is that doesn't matter. Technically, yeah. Tap. Some there's one in. Uh, Downtown, there's one in Bloomington. Yeah, real District good. District tap or just the tap? The tap. The just tap. the tap? Okay. Yeah. Do you drink your weight in beer while you're there? <laughs> really good beer. Too. Really good beer. Answers Appreciate yes. it. Hey, See, Con- Connor's actually the right guy to ask <laughs> I know. the whole time. I know. Yeah. No, he wanted to be on the couch earlier for the football discussion, but <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait, wait on that. It's coming. It's coming because he does have some great insight. Thank you for your help today. And, folks, thanks for watching today. For Matt Taylor, J.J. Stankovitz, big thanks to Anthony Costanzo, and, of course, uh, uh, DeForest Buckner, one of the newly signed Colts, who's going to be here for a couple more years. It's on, boys. It's on. I'm always saying this. I always say it the year in it. The Monday – of the Boston Marathon when they run it and the 11 o'clock first pitch in Boston. Totally. That is the day that everything else behind this is gravy because we have summer coming. We've got, uh, yeah, you know, our, May. Mm-hmm. we've got May oh, coming, yeah. obviously, with the race coming up. 100%. May Tay, you the love draft. the Major League All Star game. I know that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be. Look forward to it every year. The you're going to be shopping at the bit, but I'm saying Aaron Westfield Judge. and the training camp will be upon us, guys. As soon as that Boston Marathon hits, can't wait. So appreciate you both for sitting down and we're going to yeah. do it again, all right? Right? Yeah, July 12th, can't get here fast <laughs> enough. That Tuesday of All-Star Weekend. It's my birthday as well. I thought you were going to be. Hell yeah. Well, yeah remember, I'll have a birthday party about the Major League Baseball watch All-Star Christine game. Encarnacion yeah, we'll diggers. go to Priscilla's. Uh, we'll go to Portillo's. <laughs> Priscilla's. Jeez. God bless You almost it. had a full podcast. Oh, almost. Folks, it's time to leave. I'll see you. We'll see you next week. For J.J. Stankwitz, Matt Taylor, I'm Jeffrey Gorman. Thanks for watching the official Colts podcast. One more time, the official Colts podcast. There we go.